you know, this feels like we're sort of doing the flip side of Ben Folds 5. You know, they've got five members, or have three members for, you know, the Ben Folds 5. We banjo three, four people. So thanks for keeping us on our toes. This is actually news to us. We thought there were three people. <laughs> we like to be mysterious. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is going to be so much fun. The sound check has just been outstanding. And uh, if you like what you hear today, which I know you are going to, it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the KC Irish Fest. And it's 9.30 tonight on the Miller Light stage, and then Saturday and Sunday on the Boulevard stage at 7. Um, you know, you guys were mentioning beforehand that you've, you've played the KC Irish Fest before, and it was a really big thing for you to come and play. Yeah, I suppose coming from Ireland, Kansas City is a long way, first of all. And then we had played, the year previous, we'd come to North America for the first time as a band, and we'd played Milwaukee Irish Festival, which is this huge Irish festival, one of the largest in the world, and larger than anything we'd experienced in Ireland. And so we played that, and we played this small little tent, and... Daniel Regan from Casey Irish Fest and a couple other guys were knocking about and they saw it and they said, to hell with it, we're going to put you on the biggest stage when you get down to Kansas City and we're going to give you prime time slots and you'll either be a roaring success or an absolute failure. <laughs> and there's no, there's no in between. So we came down here and we were, we were really nervous but very excited. And it's just, it's an amazing atmosphere down here. The people are so, so kind and it, we just had an amazing time the whole weekend. Now, we, we baked alive. It was hotter than anything we'd ever experienced. <laughs> so we were taking ice baths every 15 minutes. But uh, we still still couldn't keep cool. And, you know, the, the we all know the end of that story because you did well. You're back on the big stages this weekend down at Crown Center. So it's pretty exciting. Well, we weren't back last year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we paid them an awful lot of money to come back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'd love to hear some music if we could. Yeah. We'll start with a song called uh, We All Need More Kindness in This World. And there's a verse in this that says we all need more sunshine in this world. But considering we're Irish people in Kansas City, a place that's located about a quarter mile from the sun, <laughs> we sometimes sing this we all need more sunscreen.
You know, if you weren't planning on going to Crown Center this weekend, you are now. That's Wee Banjo 3 here in our studios. And, you know, it's just, you guys are such an interesting band because, you know, in a way, you're kind of a bluegrass Americana band, but you're an Irish band and, you know, you honor the roots, but at the same time, you've completely made it your own thing. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming that you don't worry too much about that. No, I suppose we've kind of taken our own slant on the music. And as the great Bill Munro said, there would be no bluegrass without the Irish. And um, we developed, I suppose, over the years, we grew up listening to Irish music and we're really, our, our roots are set in the traditions in Ireland. But um, about 10, 15 years ago, we got a, a, a compilation CD from a friend of ours, a music journalist in Chicago. And it was all the great bluegrass standards, I suppose. And that was, for me anyway, my first introduction to bluegrass and really got my teeth into it and really enjoyed the way that the fiddle sounds are different and for me the, the, the different techniques used, but still the similarities and you can really hear the tunes that are the same and the kind of the, the songs, you know, there's, there's lots of similarities. So I suppose from there I started to experiment and kind of put the blinkers up towards the true traditionalists because, you know, like any, any tradition, there's people that are not going to like change, so... Right. And, you know, it's it's funny in this country, it's like you, you'll you see like bluegrass purists go nuts if they're drums. So it's not exactly, you know, the kind of thing where uh, you know, it, maybe that explains what sounded like a fairly odd question. I mean, there's some people that are so resistant to change. But on the other hand, I don't know how you can listen to what you all just did and and not smile, not have a fair degree of love in your heart. Right. Well, I think you get that within, within the tradition as well, even from, you know, people who like to play the, the traditional Irish tunes really p in a pure way, in a straight way. And then you've got some guys who are still just playing, I don't mean just playing, but merely playing Irish music, but in a more progressive way as well. So you have that on many levels. Um, so your attitude is one we like. If it's good, just go with it. Yeah. So there are different styles of banjo playing, though, and... Uh, you know, I wish I knew enough to make sense of a question about it, but, you know, it, it's like Bela Fleck doesn't play like Flatt and Scruggs. And, you know, so it, it's like, do you, when you approach this instrument, I guess that one of the things that really struck me was uh, the the phrase, uh, and, and I'm looking for it now in my notes, but Irish, uh, Irish banjo techniques. So how would a Irish banjo technique be different than an American, well, or an African for that matter. So our banjo is four strings, and it's been called the tenor banjo. So it's the same four string instrument that's popular in jazz and you know in the kind of swing circles of music over here. And then obviously the five string banjo is nearly the national instrument here in the, the US. You know, it's, that, it's synonymous with the bluegrass and the old time claw hammer stuff. So from that point of view, it's a completely different setup the way it's tuned but the actual mechanics of the instrument are the same. And it's funny that you should say about Irish banjo traditions because really the Irish banjo became popular in about the 1960s. There was a folk explosion in Ireland where uh, the Dubliners came out and Barney McKenna was this banjo player who tuned his banjo GDAE, like a fiddle, an octave down. And he just started inventing techniques right off the bat and mimicking a lot of the Irish fiddle style. Originally, that's kind of where a lot of it came from. And so we would have grown up doing a lot of that kind of ornamentation, rolls and triplets and such. And then through listening to the likes of Bella Fleck and Earl Scruggs, you hear that like that beautiful rolling sound, that cross picking sound that's so, I don't know, it's so pervasive and you just you hear it and you want to you want to do it. So, yeah, um, yeah we, we got into that. And that's kind of that crossover of we've been accused of coming up with the uh, the new genre of Celt grass. So it fuses Irish music with bluegrass music, because I suppose we play. Irish music with a bluegrass tint and maybe play bluegrass music with an Irish tint. You know, for all of the uh, adaption uh, or melding that you guys do, you clearly have reverence for what's gone before. You know, the first record in 2012 was Roots of the Banjo Tree. And, you know, in, in a way, that whole album was just honoring tradition. Um, you know, you, you spoke of the 60s, but I think that one of the things that's so fascinating is just the things that I read in researching this that you said about Irish slaves, African slaves, and, and the mid-1800s. So that's kind of what we kind of took that first album to do. 
um, was kind of to chart that journey. So the banjo kind of did originate in, in Africa and then traveled um, with the slaves to America and the West Indies. And for us, what we kind of wanted to do with that Roots of the Banjo Tree album was was to take the music that was not just played by the banjo, but associated with the banjo, or even just kind of around the banjo at that time. Uh, and I mean, one of the songs that, that's on that record is a song by a band that immigrated from Ireland to Canada uh, and became a roaring success over there. And, and Roots was a really important album for us because we really wanted to establish that there was this huge history to the banjo that was never really explored. Uh, and then our second album, is kind of our journey with that music. So taking that music on the road and traveling through America and Canada and Europe um, and the people that we met along the way. And we've, yeah, we've had a really good reaction to, to meeting other musicians who come from those backgrounds. Yeah, the second record is called Gather the Good. And then just uh, this year, they've released Live in Galway. And I'm assuming that you're going to have these at the, the merch table over the weekend. You yep. assume correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we love to see people buying albums. And I suppose it's, we're, we're an independent band. So we don't have management and we don't have a label. So it's this grassroots appreciation of music that makes it happen. You know, festivals where people come out and love live music and radio stations such as yourselves who support independent artists. Because that's huge for us. Otherwise, we'd all be sitting at home very lonely playing our own music. Yeah. You know, for all of the talk about, um, you know, African, um, you know, the, the origins of the instrument and, and then the American traditions, one of the things that came out, uh, you know, that I learned from you guys is that, you know, minstrel bands, you know, the guys that are out there playing in blackface back in the 1800s, like 80% of them were Irish. Yeah. I mean, that's just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. well, there were a hu huge amount of, obviously, Irish people who came to this country and then obviously then a lot of musicians as well. And the Irish musicians in this country, to kind of taper off slightly on that, in this country in the 20s and beyond had a huge influence on the Irish music scene at home because that coincided with the recording era. Um, and the recordings they made, people like Michael Coleman and, you know, fiddle players from Sligo like that, um, sent their recordings back home um, to Ireland and it had a huge impact on the scene as well. But by that token, to go back to your question, yeah, there were Irish musicians who were looking for work and the minstrel shows were a viable source of work. So, as you know, they had their faces blackened and, and off they went, yeah. Different time. Huge amount of Irish, yeah, very different time, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We'd love to hear some more music if we could. We banjo three in the studio today here at the bridge.
That was just spectacular, guys. Thank we banjo so three in our studios. Uh, you know, the level of musicianship, I may have this yeah, not counted exactly right, but I stopped counting after 15 All-Ireland titles spread <laughs> through the band. So a uh, pretty high level of musicianship. We banjo three playing tonight, Saturday and Sunday at the KC Irish Fest. 9.30 tonight, 7 on Saturday and Sunday. And they do have that merch table. You, you've got you've got something besides uh, something besides uh, music to sell, too. Uh, there's a sociological experiment happening. There is. I mean, we have the, the band T-shirt, which is a very special T-shirt, actually, because it's uniquely Irish. If you wear it, you can get sunburned in the dark at night. <laughs> and then our other sociological experiment is our band egg, which is an egg shaker unlike any other. It's unique to the band because it's a band egg. And what we're running as a sociological experiment is that if people sit on these eggs for long enough, they may hatch into a banjo. So we want to run and see how long people will sit on these eggs <laughs> before they decide they may not be getting a banjo. Yeah, there's no guarantee with that one. We are a trusting people. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how that one goes. Uh, we banjo three tonight over at the KC Irish Fest. You know, uh, for all of that stuff about origins of the instrument and the different countries and cultures, I think that really the, the thing that's at the heart of the band, Martin, maybe is the feeling that you had when you were, you know, like just a kid, eight, nine, ten years old, whatever it was, when you heard a banjo for the first time and said, Dad, can we have one? Yeah, I think that's it. It's in, the banjo is an inherently fun instrument. And uh, we were talking about all the history stuff and not to delve back into that, but Ireland had a long history of oppression. And obviously with the African slaves, their, their music was very joyous because it was a music of the oppressed, you know. If you listen to Negro spirituals and gospel, it's amazing music. It, it carries so much happiness. And I think a lot of Irish music does the same thing because it's music of oppression. And the banjo embodies that in a big way. So, I mean, I think when you listen to the banjo, you can't but not have a smile on your face. At least that's what we think. So then yeah. when you put two of them in a band, that's a really big smile. So our, our thing is that when people come along to a live show, even if they're not a huge music fan, or even if they're not, you know, knowledgeable about the music we play, Irish music or bluegrass, that they come away thinking, I had a great time. And, you know, life is hard and it's nice to be able to come to something and just let loose and have fun. And that's our big aim. That's our takeaway from the weekend is people come down. We want them to have fun and go away with a smile on their face and some CDs and a banjo. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I think about, uh, you know, that joy. And I'm wondering if maybe it comes out in bigger or smaller ways when you play to audiences that really haven't had the exposure. You know, you, you've been traveling all around the world, Germany, Japan, United States, and it's sort of like, and, I, and I'm sorry, I, I didn't check the tour schedule to see. Has, have you been to Japan yet? No, that's happening this December. Yeah, I'd I'd really like to know what that experience is like, because, you know, th are they going to know what's coming? Well, I have, I've played there before with different outfits over the years, and uh, it's an amazing audience, and they really love the the Irish music, so I'm really hoping that they like the banjo. <laughs> <laughs> Said the fiddle player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we discovered recently that Japan has its own type of banjo, so we're actually doing some collaborations while we're over there in December with a really famous uh, shamisen or shamisen player. I could be pronouncing that very badly. If there's any Japanese listeners, you can feel free to correct me at the gig. But uh, yeah, the one very funny experience we did have about banjos not being in a culture where, you know, they're very prevalent is we played in Colombia in South America about, about 18 months ago. And we did a gig on an island called San Andreas, which is, it's about 600 miles north of the Colombian coastline and about 200 miles off the coast of Nicaragua. So it's a fair bit of distance away from anywhere. And we played a gig with a PA that was from the 1940s. <laughs> and uh, the people were just so friendly. They had never heard Irish music, really. And they had never heard banjo in, in that way. Right. And they loved it. They were just, they wanted so much more of it. And they were up talking afterwards and examining the instruments. And that was an amazing experience, actually, just to see how people react to it for the first time, unadulterated, you know? You were the first person to ever play, um, you know, banjo from Ireland in the Grand Old Opry. I claim that anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, I think it was the first Irish tenor banjo player to play in the Opry. It was an amazing experience with 
good friends of ours, um, Irish musicians, that came over and did a collaboration with Ricky Skaggs and Aubrey Haney and Brian Sutton, amazing players, like idols of ours for many years. And uh, I just happened to be in Nashville with them and the Opry presented itself. And that was an amazing experience because Dave and I, are, our dad is a huge country music fan and, and bluegrass, like old Hank Williams stuff and Johnny Cash. And we grew up listening to that in the house. So he was able to listen to me on the Opry stage via radio from Ireland. Yeah. And like he was so happy. It was if, if it was one wish to give him, that was my wish. And it was I was glad to be able to do it, you know. He's a professional musician. Mm. He's we used to have this running joke that dad had four professions. He's a mechanic during the day, he's a farmer during the evening. And then he's a musician at night, and then when he comes home, he's a dad. <laughs> um, so that's where a lot of the music that, that me and Martin grew up with came from our dad. A lot of the songs we would have learned, even now a lot of the songs I still sing, are completely stolen from my dad. Yeah. And he, 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 he had a love of music from when he was very young. I think probably my favorite story about dad was that he went to Dublin, traveled two and a half hours from Galway, to uh, get a suit for his wedding and came home with a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Did he wear it? <laughs> a guitar? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's actually, the, it's actually the guitar that I learned to play guitar on, which, you know, 25 or 26 years later. So. Yeah, that's kind of great. What did he wear to his wedding? His dad's suit. Huh. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, of course, now it's obviously to her brothers. And, and there's actually, uh, Enda's not here, but Enda also in the band, Fergal, your brother. Yes, yeah. So what's it like being on the road with two sets of brothers? Is there like wrestling? It's wonderful. We <laughs> yeah. never fight. We never fight. It, uh, it's a wonderful experience, and we love each other very, very dearly, and there's never any arguments. And once <laughs> the mics are off... We'll get the real answer. It's, 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 it's interesting, for sure, because, yeah, we are, well, there's two sets of brothers usually on the road, and we have Gary, who's the additional fifth brother. Um, yeah, there, there, there are proper rows, but because you're, you're effectively family, it's, it, it blows over pretty quickly, usually, yeah. you know, and you, you deal with stuff head on when you can. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a great way to, to see the world and to make music. And, yeah. yeah. It seems like you guys are all making music. Uh, and then this is the thing, this is the, the group that just sort of popped. This is the thing that suddenly worked. But there was, there's been mixing and mashing and all kinds of different, you know, uh, yeah. or, you know, different bands, different duos. And is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, as you said, I'm not full time in the band, but myself and Fergal have been playing in several different outfits for over 10 years now. Um, myself and Dave did a and Fergal did a gig in Galway for a period of time. Obviously, the boys have been playing in Galway for years and twos and threes. So, your your kind of your answer was in the question. You got it. You nailed it on. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I do that a lot. <laughs> leave leave the artist with nothing to say. That's that's my that's my way of doing things. Um, well, I have to tell you, it's like you guys have shown demonstrated uh, how much fun there is to be had tonight at Crown Center, and uh, I hope the entire city turns out to see you all tonight again. Nine thirty on the Miller Light stage tonight, and then shifting over to the Boulevard stage for Saturday and Sunday, seven o'clock. Part of um, the Kansas City Irish Fest. You can find out more about that at kcirishfest.com. Uh, their website is webanjo3.com, and three is the number, not the word spelled out. And if you go there, you can w catch a really cool video uh, from their single, The Fox, that has uh, Sharon Shannon in it, which is, is pretty awesome. Yeah. You have fun making that? Yeah, that was actually, that whole video was shot in a woods just in, in Ireland, in Galway, actually, just a couple of miles from where we all grew up. Um, so yeah, on a, a very cold and wet February morning, we trekked out into the woods and shot this video. And yeah, we had one day to do it, so it was one very long cold day in the in the woods, but it was great fun. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we won't ruin the surprise for your listeners, but there's a scene where we all have a big party in a castle, like an ancient castle in Ireland, and we were all frozen. <laughs> and Fergal is our really good resident chef. So we cooked up this huge pot of chili and it looked so large that no one thought it could ever be eaten. And it's amazing when you're that cold, your body expends so much energy. So we had all of the chili. So that's my, my takeaway from that 
that that's all I remember was the chili at the end of the day. <laughs> well, it's a great video, and it's available at webanjo3.com, and we'd love to hear another song if we could. Yep. This is a song called Gonna Write Me a Letter, and it's the story of a, a girl who brings a boy home to meet her father for the first time. Martin, David, Fergal, and Gary, um, we banjo three. Thanks so much for coming in. These guys are, they're, they're a little thin. They need some Kansas City barbecue. Uh, I'm not sure how much money they've got. So you got to buy all three albums. You got to buy the t-shirt. You got to buy the egg tonight because otherwise these guys may not be able to afford the, the passage home. And you know, it's like, you got to come down and spend money tonight at Crown Center. You get your 10% for that. All right, cool. <laughs> All I'm looking for is that free egg because I can't wait to sit on it and hatch that <laughs> and have a banjo of my own. We banjo three in the studios. And again, tonight at the Kansas City Irish Fest, 930 on the Miller Light stage, 7 o'clock Saturday and Sunday on the Boulevard stage. Guys, cannot thank you enough. That was just spectacular. We banjo three in the studios here at the bridge. <laughs>